Hello, everyone. I'm Eduardo Valaro, the Artistic Director and CEO of Ballet Hispanico, and welcome to Choreographers and Cocktails. So if you have a cocktail, please, or beverage of your choice, please join us. Thank you. Um, and this distinguished panel of dear friends, colleagues, and artists. I'm going to introduce them first. Um, uh, Justine Di Costanzo is with us, and so is Sean Kim. And I just wanted to let, this is our first, guys, this is our first watch party of uh, 2021. And we're very excited that you could be with us. Um, I was hoping that we could have a conversation about not only arabesque, but also about Vicente's work and you as dancers at Ballet Hispanico and what you're doing now. I just, if you can just humor me for a second, I wanted to make sure our audience um, gets the full context of who Vicente um, was. Vicente was a Venezuelan dancer and choreographer born in Caracas, um, Venezuela. He began his career as a dancer with the National Ballet of Venezuela, Alicia Alonso's National Ballet of Cuba, and with Roland Petit in Paris, as well as the Joffrey Ballet. Nebrara was a founding member of the Harkness Ballet, where he created his first ballet, Percussion for Six Men, in 1969, which is done by many um, ballet companies all over the world. In 1975, Nebrada helped found the International Ballet of Caracas and became their artistic director and resident choreographer in 1977. In 1984, he became the artistic director of the National Ballet of Caracas, where he remained until his passing. Um, he dan his dances have been performed by Ballet Hispanico, and we'll talk a little bit more about that. American Ballet Theater, Joffrey Ballet of Chicago, National Ballet of Canada, Berlin Opera Ballet, the English National Ballet, Australian Ballet, and the Universal Ballet of Korea. Isn't that something? Wow. What a career. And so I, I'd love you, um, my distinguished guests, to introduce themselves. We'll start with Justine. And Justine, if you could Tell us when you were in the company, um, give us a little bit of um, an overview of your career and, and mostly when you came in contact with Vicente and his work. Well, it's funny that you say that. So I danced with the company, Ballet Hispanico, 19, I'd say 87, 88 to 90, right? But it's the you question you ask is really great because Vicente, I had an experience with Vicente never having worked with him before, but I had a scholarship at New York School of Ballet with Richard Thomas uh, when I was younger. And I used to watch this company that came to New York. So the Caracas Ballet, he actually had an association with Caracas before, uh, obviously he had done work with Ballet Hispanico. And um, I had seen his company when I was a young dancer uh, rehearsing in Richard Thomas's studio. So um, I watched these lifts and I just remember being mesmerized because he made dancers do phenomenal things in the air, flips and turns, and he was always configuring things, which comes to the word arabesque, which we can talk about that a little later. Yes. The word arabesque has a different meaning. It's a configuration, right? Right. You see, there's something I looked up today just to refresh my memory that arabesque is not just like the dancer arabesque, but it's that that connection with the moors and the uh, figures that make patterns and things. So um, Vicente, for me, when I watched this company, the extraordinary company, I was like, wow, I really want to move like that. I really want to do that. So it wasn't until like when I was dancing with Ballet Hispanico, then all of a sudden Vicente appeared to work with us. I was like, oh my God, a dream come true. Like I was over the moon because Wow, except that I, you know, the, the thing that I had was I was a bigger girl, so I was afraid he was never gonna use me for big, you know, uh, lifts and stuff like that. Some of the little kid girls got to do. But anyway, that was my first experience with Vicente. Walking in the door for me was like, oh, fantasy come true. It was Sean, amazing. Thank you, thank you. And Sean? Uh, Hi, everybody. Uh, Eduardo, thank you so much for inviting us. This is such a delightful surprise. What a gift uh, to start out this year. It's been a while. Somebody's called me an artist, but I think in my soul of souls, I, I am still a, an artist and a dancer, even though that's not what I do currently as a profession. Um, but that 
that I look at life as a dancer um, and everything that I do is, is really still, I look at in, in, in the eyes of a, a, a dancer and certainly as an artist. So, um, so my first experience with Vicente was, um, I was dancing with Ballet Florida at the time and they've also done his ballets as well. And um, I was never really meant to be in classical ballet. You know, I followed my heart um, and um, followed uh, my boyfriend at the time to Florida. And there were these amazing teachers and I stayed because I wanted to be, I wanted to get better training and they happened to have a ballet company. And, you know, I was kind of stuck in the back doing really boring classical ballets. I can't tell you how many Nutcrackers, Coppelia, you know, Peter and the Wolf, like those kinds of things. And, and I remember um, the, the artistic director saying, hey, we have this choreographer from South America. He's a big deal. Never heard of him. Um, and uh, my first ballet with him was Handel the Celebration. And I think that to me was a ground game changer, right? I didn't know, like Justine was talking about. I didn't know that you could move that way or you had permission to move that way. It was so much freedom. And for me, it was about that sense of joy. There was so much joy about this dance. And I was a little guy, I guess I still am. Um, um, and so those lifts were really like, I, I was mesmerized, but even I could do those, right? And he, he just made it really accessible to allow me the permission to dance the way I wanted to dance, which was with much more freedom. Um, and also he really brought out that passion in you, like in the qualities that I didn't think that that was in me. And so I'm ultimately grateful for, I guess really unleashing this artistic side in a classical ballet setting that I didn't know was possible. And I wonder if I could push, I mean, you both mentioned um, his, uh, innovation in lifts. I mean, I think he was very much well known for that at that time. I, I'm sure dancers now look at the work and go, oh, that looks so simple. Um, but it, it was never, that's the beauty of it. It looked so effortless and so simple. But I remember um, the, the works and I just wanna add that um, we are two dancers, two male dancers that killed Justine Di Costanzo in one of Vicente Nebrada's work. <laughs> years on stage. She was an evil queen and Sean, I had to try and, and, and be as, you know, fabulous as he was when he left the company and I took the role over. But, um, but that was th those, I hope to get back to some of those fun times that we had. But I wonder if we could talk a little bit about um, what you were saying, arabesque. I think that's one of the things that's so interesting to me about Vicente was that he kind of took ballet and moved it um, not only to the contemporary world, but it was, he was using a lot of cultural references and not so, not even Latino, but the intersectionality of, of cultures. Arabesque is Moorish. You know, when you think, I remember when we went to Spain, when you see those reliefs, those gorgeous cur curly cues. Um, and so that has a lot to do with this piece and why it's so, um, uh, elegant, for lack of a better term. I wonder if you can talk about how you, um, first of all, how he brought that out in you, uh, and also how you saw it implemented throughout the whole work. Well, it's, you, I, I, so it's very interesting. You, you're talking about, like I said, I went back and I was like, ah, I mean, being older and wiser now, you look back and say, like, when we were younger, we didn't even look at how, how in depth his work was I mean we were like oh we want to dance we want to do ballet we want to do and he already like you you talk about that connection I if if you don't mind I'm going to read up what I looked up no because, go ahead and the, and the reason why I'm doing this is like I'm I'm I, I've educated today when when I look back at the ballet and go wow he really was incorporating what the meaning of arabesque was like I said before doesn't mean the leg up behind you right I don't know if you know this, Sean, but I didn't know this, okay? So when I look this up today and I say, okay, so arabesque, and, and I'm gonna read it to you, an ornamental design consisting of intertwined flowing lines originally found in Arabic or Moorish decoration. 
So now when you look at the piece and how we all went like together and into and then we went and did, I'm like, he was using the actual definition as opposed to what we thought of arabesque. I mean, like, like we're doing ballet, we're doing an arabesque, you know? There was something so much more, and that was in every, every piece of work that he did, right? Yeah, I, I wanted to add to that, that there was always a sense of drama. Yeah. <laughs> you know, in his, in, even in the most purest dance or ornamental like arabesque, but there was always a story um, that I really loved loved and and the thing for me I, I guess you know he brought really the actor in me and ultimately that's why I went into you know transition into Broadway because it's but he allowed you to bring all of your creative and artistic side whatever it was and, you know I remember you know our first rehearsal doing Inez de Castro like I couldn't have imagined a perfect person than Justine to play Inez right <laughs> like there just wasn't like he just had this innate sense who would, and, 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 and I don't like, you're like, well, of course, of course, just he would play in it. Like, you know what I mean? And I guess obviously he saw me as an assassin, <laughs> but I, I want, I, because he's so known for his lifts and his lyricism is his musicality, but I also want to just remember how amazing he was with the, with the drama and bringing that that story element into into into, into his ballets, yeah. Um, and, and I guess one of my highlights was when he did stage Romeo and Juliet on on Ballet Florida, and I played Mercutio, mm. um, and and I think that was really like probably a career highlight for me is to play that kind of a character, and and I felt like doing Inez at Castro was a little bit of that, right? It was more of a story. Um, but I don't know any other choreographer that really embodies all of those things that we're talking about. And yeah. allowed you to become, I mean, add to that when you say he, maybe this is another question for you, from you. He allowed you to interpret his own movement. Well, I think his assistant, uh, Zane, was also very helpful in allowing you to say, just do something. because. Because Vicente was, you want to get into it, Vicente was very, like, he go, do like this, do like this, do like this. And, and it was interesting because Sean had already worked, even when we did Arabesque, especially, and then later Inez. But um, Vicente would, he already knew you, didn't know a lot of us which was good because you kind of like, oh, just do that. And you could, and, and Sean could always kind of just like, you know, figure it out, do something and he'll <laughs> like it. And, and so he was very, Sean was very helpful for mm -hmm. the Vicente never was really particular, you know, some people are very anal. And I say this in the sense that, you know, do this, do that. And he was like, do something like this. And you had to just do it, you know? And he'd go, oh, I like that. Oh, I like that, I'll keep that. And then you wouldn't even know what you do. And then Zane would come in and go, yeah, keep it, you know? And so the two of them together were on the side, you know, Zane would take you when you're trying to figure out what did Vicente just give us to do? And, and Zane would go, yeah, that looks okay, just do that. And then you come back and you do something and, and, and Vicente would be like, yes, that's it, that's it, that's it. So he allowed, you as an artist and it was like nothing else. And I was very fortunate because coming to Ballet Hispanico, having had, my mother was a flamenco dancer. Sean had her as a teacher and as a school, which is another little tidbit. But um, I had come from a modern dance company in Portugal, but I always had the ballet background. And so I kind of missed having the ballet, you know, connection there. And Vicente kind of let you run with the movement. And so if you were able to grab that with him, and that's one thing I felt I always connect, I really felt I connected with Vicente, as I'm sure Sean feels that way too, that we just would, we would understand that he wanted you to make it your own. And nobody should do the same exact thing again. It should become you, everything. Yeah, and I could, you could always tell when a, a dancer was frustrated by that, because either you, kind of all of a sudden the light went off and go, oh, 
he's expecting me. It was like he was the preemptive um, structured improvisationalist, right? <laughs> because he, he would just tell you, here's some structure. And then he'd allow you to go. And when, when he saw your personality, I remember it was when he saw that beam because you loved what you were doing at that moment, he was like, hold on to that. Yes, um, yes, yes, yes. I wonder if you can, because we, we had that conversation about how that ran, because then after that, you had to remember what you just did. <laughs> yes. yes. And, and he would remember <laughs> if you didn't do it the same way. He would remember. Yes. I don't know how he did. <laughs> Um, well, but what, that's what but that's what Zane was there for. Yeah, that's true. Zane, was, Zane was very her. good at sort of kind of remembering what you did, because you could do something and go, Zane, I don't remember, and he'd go, I think you did something like this, and I go, Oh, okay, yeah. He was very good that, and that's why um, they worked so well together. You know what I? It's I was, Edward and I was talking the other day, and it's like you know, looking back, right? We are, we are, we have ex life experiences. And I think, you know, maybe because we were we were young, that that I, I feel like I didn't fully appreciate what was given to us and the opportunity, you know. And I I'm, I love fashion. I've always loved fashion. And what it reminds me what is, is that you know having a couturier design a fabulous you know Met Gala ball on you, and no one else is going to wear that. And that's to me what it felt like working with him. You know, wow, that's good. But I mean, he was custom tailoring it. You know, it was couture ballet on you. And, you know, I'm sure Eduardo, you did it completely differently than I did. It still had the same story and, and the feel, but, you know, it, it, he allowed you to make it your own, right? And I think that's, that's really rare, especially for choreographers is that, you know, they become very militant. I know when I was doing choreography, I was nothing like Vicente. <laughs> uh, um, he just had this trust, right? That all that trust that it's all gonna work out. You're gonna, we're gonna figure it out, you know, just play. And um, um, that, that's, that's, you know, what a gift, what a gift. I just wanna take a, a, a little break and again, welcome our audience and say that we are happy to take your questions as we continue this conversation. Um, please on Facebook or on YouTube, um, we'd love to answer any of your questions. I wanna go back to talking about his work and do one more technical thing, which were his lifts, right? The, the ability to smoothly go from one thing, I mean, from the ground to the floor to all the way up in a full lift, that was something very, um, I think, uh, singular about his work and how he was playing with also the flexibility of the upper body. Um, I, I think for a lot of dancers, uh, especially those even trained in, in modern, at that time in modern dance, it was uh, very freeing. And I wonder if you could talk a little bit um, about that or if you have something to, to add to that. I did ask Zane, right? It, one of my passions is is figure skating pairs. Wow, and and a lot of his stuff really reminded me of you know pairs figure skating, and 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 he said yeah I think a lot of the inspiration comes from that. But to imagine you don't have the speed on the ice that you do on, but it's really about capturing that momentum, and it was completely effortless, right? Um, and that it was really true partnership because if, 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 if one of you were off, you couldn't complete that particular lift, right? That's what I, that's what I remember. And, and, and I, I was not the best partner, you know, that was not, and I, I marveled at people who could do that. like Zane. Zane was an amazing partner, amazing partner, probably the best. I saw Zane, by the way, it was Zane that was doing some of the lifts that I saw back in the studio when I was a young girl. Zane was dancing with the company at the time. So I got to see him in action. And yes, I mean, not all of us got to, but we, we we're fortunate enough. He was an amazing, amazing yeah. partner. Yeah. Um, I was very jealous because I never got to, you know, that part of it. Like I said, okay, so I looked at this at the beginning because I had to turn off and go, but to see Mari do all of that. So the thing is this, and Mari was, it was the perfect size 
for all of this. And she did that. She originated that role where I think it was Teresina. Teresina oh. Goheen. Right. She did this, but um, it was, I think, well, maybe I'm confused. No, who did? So Mari did it in this video. She did all the lifts and everything else. Yes, right. But so when they broke it up at times, Tina, and I remember, so the wonderful thing about Vicente as well was the marriage of the flamenco. So you talk about Spanish, like heritage and stuff, was the flamenco movement of the upper body, which was so what I loved coming into Ballet Hispanico and having that was because of my mother's background to see that beautiful port bra and everything. And Mari had it exquisitely. And Tina would always say, watch her, you know, she goes to, you know, and she had it beautifully. And of course she does it in all the lifts as well. And like you said, those lifts are really, they seamless, yes. But her upper back and body and everything that goes from one to the other is so extraordinary. And still yet, Tina decided to allow me to do at one point when she mixed it up a bit, because Tina had a tendency to do this. And I, I think I said that to you before, Eduardo, if she felt like somebody had one part that they could do. So she allowed me to do that opening section in the red with my purple on for a while. So I did that opening number. I did that opening piece, but I never got to do the list because I was too big. That's so, so sad. So I got to do the flamenco whole thing kind of back once then, but I never got to do the lifts. I was so jealous. I think I want to be, I, I want to uh, just uh, give this little tidbit of information to our audience. I think what you're talking about, because this is a second iteration, Arabesque, this piece was originally called Eight Spanish Dances. Right, mm -hmm. right. Mm -hmm. And right. then- and then it was broken up to what you're saying, where where the lead doesn't do everything, um, and there there's there there's more partnering, and yes, absolutely. I I loved um, I loved the crew, the crew that 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 I learned this with. I I mean, Mari McKenzie, come on, I she was uh, it was I was terrified um, when I started working, and she was like, come on, child. Let's go, do this, ha hold me here, do that, do that. She was so supportive, so amazing um, uh, during this whole thing. But I wanna give just a shout out to everyone in, in case you didn't know who was dancing tonight. Mari McKenzie was there, Justine, of course, Di Costanzo, Nadine Mose, Catherine mm -hmm. Ross, Teresina Goheen, oh Costas, Vern Hunt, um, oh, wow. Kim, and of Vern course, Hunt. illustrious, uh, Pedro Ruiz. And Jose, right? You said Jose, right? I Costa. Jose Costa. Right. Yeah, if I did, Jose, if you're watching, I, of course you were there. You had that first <laughs> solo. Um, you are really reaching the recess of my memory because of Vern Hunt. I yes. have, cannot picture what he looks like, but I guess I will. You will. You will. In the video. I saw, yeah, yeah, no, I know. I saw him. He was the first guy to come out, right? He yes, the first man to come out. Yeah, I remember I went, oh my God. <laughs> yes, and so, you know, one of the things that brings up that, that what you were saying, Justine, really brings up to me is that whole notion of fusion and how we he was using cultural references. You know, right now we're at a point in this world where the arts, arts are being asked to really show narratives from um, the multiplicity and the diversity. And here, back in the, you know, 1970s, this man was doing it already. Already. For ballet. I mean, there's so many calls right now for ballet to change it up. And yet here he was. Um, and I, I just wanted to bring that up and, and maybe you can reflect on what that meant to you. Yeah, I mean, the, the list of names, right? If you just look at the names, but now the faces, except for Vern, sorry, Vern, um, that, that I don't think we realized at the time how amazing, how forward thinking, and not only Vicente, but also Tina and Ballet Hispanico at that time. Because, you know, after I left Ballet Hispanico, I did a Broadway musical called Shogun the Musical. Before Shogun, there was no Asian musical other than King and I, right? So if you wanted to do musical theater or Broadway, either you did Flower Drum Song, King and I, that's it. You know what I mean? And I had such a hard time getting cast, such a hard time getting cast after that. But, you know, knowing that there was really no race or color 
that was pretty extraordinary. And here we are 25 years later and we're stealing, you know, we're, you know, even worse racial division and unrest today than we did 25 years ago. And what an amazing model and experience that we had. Like, you know, I don't even think, I don't think like when you think about those names, I see faces, but I don't even think, I don't think in terms of color or race, right? Everybody has such a unique personality and what they contributed, but I don't ever, you know, like, you know, I'm, I'm a Korean Filipino. Why, what am I doing in a, you know, ballet Hispanico? It's pretty, it's pretty incredible. And, 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 and a fantastic model for anybody who, who has any questions about, can you do non-traditional casting? Well, it's interesting, that you bring that in. it, it's interesting that bring that in because when you just said you were this doing that in Valley Hispanico and I'm Italian American Canadian descent and there were several Italian type of, there was no, we, we were allotted an opportunity to, to some criticize now fill roles that Hispanic community should be doing. Absolutely, no doubt about it. But back then it wasn't a matter of that. It was just, just it was abject. It was educating us, <laughs> quite frankly, in the Hispanic community to have somebody like Vicente do the kind of work he did with music. Like for me, it's incredibly emotional to listen to Granados. I grew up with my mother dancing to that. So that actual music was a childhood piece my mother had created in a solo that she did with her flamenco dance. So feeling all of those feelings that come with that Spanish music, we all, and Eduardo, there were in a, in the company when we were we were we were formed back when Tina was growing and growing and growing. Half of the company was like Italian American, Korean. But we were we across the board. We wasn't just Hispanic. So here you now have this company that's Hispanic. You know, Valley Hispanic has been Valley Hispanic for years. She has grown this. You have taken the helm, and it's unbelievable what you've done. But you have allotted and allowed, and for, for that community. Of of, of people to own, own and grow forward with that heritage, which wasn't recognized probably, and they did it very cleverly, wouldn't have been recognized probably as much if a word didn't have yourself and myself who were, okay, we're Italian, but we're white, we're American, we'll do it. You know, we had that mix enough, right? To allow it to be successful somewhat commercially. Don't you think, oh, Eduardo, I'm not hearing you. Sorry, I think that I, I think that what I want to take from what you said, because it's beautiful, I think Tina always showed, and, and certainly she showed me, and she showed everyone, um, that the diversity is part of each and every culture. That even though you might think that you're this, there, if you dig in deep, you know um, uh, that somewhere in your evolutionary uh, past, there was some kind of intersection that happened. Oh, I'm Spanish for sure. I don't know. And so you just, you, uh, uh, when you started, you said, I'm Italian, I'm Canadian, I'm this, I'm that. That's beautiful. And I think that's one of the things that Tina was not afraid of embracing and saying, somehow or other, we'll all come in, have a conversation and leave you with some thoughts. And that's, I think that that, um, is still very important. It's important for me. I have a question from an audience member and it's a fun one. So um, uh, it, the, the comment is beautiful dance. I'd be interested in hearing your impressions of Nebrala's personality. <laughs> um, you wanna go? Go, go. It, he was, he was capricious. He was, he was almost like a, a light. Right, this exactly. burst of energy, completely unpredictable. He would get upset with you, like if you did not remember these and that, you know, like hundred, you know, the, the fifteenth variation that you've done. But I think what I what I want to say is just just generosity. You know, the just he had absolutely no ego, right? He really, really wanted you to shine, for you to discover. And, and, and if he saw you light up, he lit up. You don't, I feel like, because I haven't really thought about Vicente in a long time. But it's funny because 
you know, maybe not too long ago, I really thought about him. And then, you know, you know, a week later, Justine texts me. So obviously he's had a huge impact on my life, but I think it's that generosity of spirit that I, I will always remember. Um, and that I want, you know, that I, will, I, that, that I can start to impart with, with um, the people that I work with, my staff members, you know, truly giving them the generosity so they can shine. Um, that's, that, that's, that, that, to me, that's what Vicente is. Oh, oh, joy. I mean, you know, when you, when you put him in a nutshell, it was pure joy and fun and mischievousness. And I think that that was the thing for me, not as a dancer only, but as a person. And I think with Vicente could relate to somebody on a personal level, it wasn't about the dance anymore. And I think that that for me with him, even though, you know, he was getting had love, he would play with the sexuality as well with me. And, you know, we know he was gay and his lover was Zane. It didn't matter, but he was, when I do something or like he would like, and he had a way, it was funny, would draw out the playfulness, the joy of the movement, the lightness of, of, of your being. And I think, especially in a time like now, it kind of made me cry going back and look, looking at that. It was just fun. He was so much fun to work with. And yet you're right. He could be like, what are you doing? Am I doing? But if you, if you, if you, if you approached him with like, I don't know, you know, you, you did this, this and this and he'd laugh or have a good giggle. I mean, you know, we, we could go, you're gonna have to bring us back for the other one. You know, <laughs> because so many things happened with him with that one. <laughs> but, uh, but in Arabesque, I mean, he would do things like, yeah, I mean, the, the fun. When I think about when you do Arab attitude, we did this little thing where we we go around in a, a side attitude, holding the balance, you know. And I don't think like it didn't used to be held; it was just a pass through. But there was one day I remember being in rehearsal, and I held it, and he was like, "Oh, look at that! Oh, <laughs> everybody do that!" So he was like, he could see something, and he'd go, "Oh, I like that. Do that." And so that was what was fun. So I remember that so well. So the little things I remember in the ballets were the attitude, because I remember whole and love it and whole. <laughs> and it was, it was so, yeah, fun. I mean, he was fun. One of the things that I remember is, you know, <laughs> he was so good at throwing shade. I mean, he could just whip it out and say, bam, I'm calling you out and then turn on a dime and go up and give you a hug. Um, and you know, it was a playfulness, it was a sauciness to get you thinking, to get you um, um, moving out of that. And, and I think it goes back to something Sean um, was saying also about the generosity of spirit that he allowed to come into the room. Um, that, that to me, I, I will always, always remember and you know, never forget how impactful both him as a choreographer and then Zane as a rehearsal director was for me um, later on in, in my own trajectory. So I'm very grateful. I have another question. Um, and I think this is a great question. I love when someone always asks this is about young people. And you are two um, very successful artists, successful people. You've moved on. Um, what would you say to a young person today who wants to be an artist or, or a dancer? <laughs> I, I want to quote very right? yeah, Sean you want to take this one first I have to think about this one no I mean I, I first of all I mean I know we talk about Vicente and how joyful it was and and that's rare I want to say that kind of that fun not that dance isn't fun but I keep thinking of you know Debbie Allen and fame right <laughs> and this is where you start paying right here so if you want to dance, if you want this as a career, you know, you have to want it more than anything else because it's probably the one, one of the, the most challenging, most difficult profession. And then very few people really get a chance to work as a professional. And, and, and I, I meet so many people who are trained 
you know, uh, gone. they have degrees, but they've never really gone on to have a professional career. It is, it is a gift, it's a joy. Um, I, was, I, was, I, was, I was remembering, I was talking to Ed, I said, you know, when I was with, I was with Ballet Florida, I had just moved to New York and I was grateful because I had worked with Vicente. He asked me if I was interested, you know, and, and I said, any opportunity to work with Vicente, I, I was like, of course, yes. But at that time, it was all about survival, you know, just, just getting through the day, you know, um, uh, that, you know, during the day I, I would be in rehearsal and then at night, you know, I'd go down, down to the village, you know, wait on tables so we can, we could do what we do, but we did it because we love to dance. And, and I think you have to keep remembering that passion. It's a lot of freaking work. I mean, to be, a professional dancer, you're gonna be, you're gonna get a lot of no's and um, hopefully you, will, you have teachers and, 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 and mentors like Eduardo or your teachers at Ballet Hispanic or wherever you are, you're gonna hang on to those people who tell you yes. Vicente told me yes. You know, he kind of plucked me out of the corner and say, yes, you can do this. And so you wanna keep looking for those people who are encouraging you and not talking you down because there's a lot of negative, especially in our profession, right? Um, and don't let anybody tell you that you can't do it if this is what you really want. Christine, thank you, Sean. That's I, awesome. I think that was beautifully said. I think that's true. You don't let anybody tell you not, no, okay? If you really want it. The thing I would say to young dancers today, because everybody's doing twirls and, you know, 50 pirouettes and things like that. Technique is really, really important. Technique is important so that you can throw it away. So I think that my advice to young dancers is don't get too caught up on it. Know it well, but be able to be malleable, be able to listen be able to have fun. Because I think what happens sometimes is with the technique and with it, and especially kids today, even the kids that are, I'm sure in the school at Ballet Hispanico, they're, they're juggling school, they're juggling work, they do everything. So it's like, you have to really want it, but you also have to be smart enough as a young dancer to know what you have to offer and what you wanna show the world in your, expression. So I think if you know that, regardless of your technique, if you don't have the prettiest feet, I'm going to tell you a story about a friend of mine in Portugal who's one of the most beautiful dancers I ever saw and his feet are like this, okay? Very successful. So it's not always all the things that people say, it's how you, and this is what we go back to Vicente, he took out what you had to offer in humanity, in your human behavior. So if you have something to offer and something to tell, then go get it, go do it. Because that's gonna be your, that will, you know, you, you have a life, you have a life in dance. This, but don't fuck up on the technique. The, this was great, thank you, Justine, thank you both. I mean, it's, uh, it's almost an hour has gone by and we can be talking forever. It's amazing. Um, I have another question and it is from a Ballet Hispanico alum, the fabulous Merle Holloman, uh, who asks, she says, hello everyone. I absolutely love watching this dance. It seemed like a mixture of ballet with the freedom of contemporary dance. In many instances, I was reminded of the circularity and fluidity of Jose Limon. Do you know if Vicente had been inspired by Limon in any way? It's a great question. That is a really good question. I would imagine so. I mean, he took from everyone, but I don't know, uh, you know, I don't know for sure. He never spoke of him when we worked with him, but um, at the time it was close to the time of that era. So mm -hmm. I would imagine everybody was influenced by Jose Limon at that time. Yeah, I, I would only add, Sean, do you have something to add? No, I don't, I don't. I mean, you know, he's had such a, great, a variety of experiences and obviously being at Joffrey, I'm sure he encountered, you know, working with Limon or seeing him perform or being influenced by that, but 
I certainly would be if you would, if I was living at that time. I, I think um, uh, also that he worked with the Harkness for such a long time and the Harkness had such a wide repertory, I'm sure that somehow or other, what a wonderful era, that era where, you know, modern dance, those modern pioneers were, you know, um, crossing with the ballet world. Um, I have uh, a couple of other questions um, before you go. It's been so, I, again, I wanna say thank you. It's been so wonderful having this conversation. Thank you for having us. Oh, so Vicente, a lot of people don't know that Ballet Hispanico holds some of Vicente's only choreographed and only danced at Ballet Hispanico. Um, in, at Ballet Hispanico, he was allowed to not only continue to explore his um, Latinidad, but also explore very contemporary themes because he did a lot more neoclassical work outside. Um, so, so we did a few of the, the pieces. I wonder which was your Vicente, your favorite Vicente piece? And why, of course. <laughs> I mean, that's kind of, for me, that's a silly question of seeing Nancy Castro, but, but that's because, that's okay. I mean, I got such freedom with that. I mean, you know, I got to play this Blanca, this evil like queen. Well, it wasn't evil to begin with, but I ended up doing things that he said, okay, just, you know, he allowed me to be evil with her. I don't think she was originally supposed to be, but she ended up being that way. And um, yeah, I mean, he just, yeah. I mean, I got the opportunity of my lifetime to, to do that and have so much fun. And can I just tell a little tidbit of the Inez? I know yeah, it's not yeah, part yeah, of this, bring it, but bring it. So, so, so we had this thing and I'll never forget it because it was, um, it was, uh, Vicente was there with Zane on, uh, I guess it was, was it opening night or was the second night we did Inez at the Joyce? And your helmet came off. <laughs> turban. His turban. His turban came off. And um, we didn't know how to get it off the stage and I had my sword, whatever, and I stabbed the thing and threw it off. And, <laughs> and Vicente and 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 I, I so I got it in character and and they came back afterwards and 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 I never saw Vicente like this and it was just so pleasing because he was like oh what oh my god Josefa what you did he laughed so hard and so did uh, Zane because I did it totally in character and that was what he's all about he doesn't care what you do but he said you're 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 took it and threw it. So that had to have been my favorite experience that I remember. Well, you know, moving to New York um, and, you know, doing an original ballet, another original ballet uh, with Vicente was an amazing experience. Um, and then, you know, Justine and I think I were made the New York Times um, right. art section. Photographs. So I was like, you know, uh, you know, a boy from a like town in, in, in Florida, right, making it to New York. But um, I think that to me, for me, doing not only, I, I mean, I love doing uh, Batucara with the rhythmic. I love that. Um, oh my God. I, for, uh, yeah. That's exactly. What I, love. Right. Uh, I love doing arabesque for all those, you know, all those things we talked about. But I think it's really, the drama and the story that I really love doing. I think that was my favorite. And so I have a little story since <laughs> it's about that freaking turban. So <laughs> if you remember Eduardo, some of the choreography, like you're rolling on the floor and to, to manage to keep that freaking turban on while you're doing his choreography on the floor, it was really, really challenging. But one day afterwards, I got so frustrated so I went to Vicente, he goes, well, just lose it. Don't wear it, just lose it somewhere. I said, <laughs> so like he all thought <laughs> is about you and how you felt comfortable. So he, I like complete permission to like lose it somewhere in the backstage. Of course I didn't, but that kind of tells you again, that generosity of spirit. He's like, yeah, yeah, you don't want to wear it. Don't wear it, lose it, lose it. <laughs> what well, you did. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I that's I, that's I, a great I, story. I will stay on Ines de Castro because Ines de Castro has one, two, three, four, five central figures, and it's about 40 minutes long, maybe not so much, maybe 30. 
Um, and then there is a group of mourners. And that was, you know, I was one of the group of mourners along with Maya Safran and- Oh my God, Maya, you gotta get yeah, Maya. And so we would have to wait for this whole thing. And then he really got on us. He's like, you're not mourning enough. You have to mourn. We've been sitting there waiting. How do you mourn? How do you get into character immediately? So we used to do everything possible to either make ourselves laugh. <laughs> So every night there was something that we do and Maya was amazing at that. And so I remember one night she, <laughs> she blackened one of her teeth. <laughs> That's a... And I'm telling tales, but you know, it's over and done with. But we, we, we were dying the whole quarter. Well, there, there was the death scene and Pedro was popping. <laughs> We were emoting that we had these huge capes <laughs> and we were dying. And I will never forget. He comes out and he's like, I don't know what you people did, but that was perfect. <laughs> <laughs> and it was perfect. That's <laughs> hilarious. But you know, the brilliance of him, and I'm gonna go back because it, it really was brilliant. He was not afraid. I mean, again, people now taking uh, uh, you know, really open about um, non-gender binary characters and stuff. I mean, in one of the works, he had me be a transvestite. What a trans was person, Sorry, uh, but at that time, that's what, you know, it's, and it was, it was um, El Bakine, you guys had gone already. And so he needed me to switch from one role to the other in the middle of it. And he was like, so ready for it. He's like, and you're the person who's gonna do it. And you know, when you see that on stage that he was representing and unafraid of doing that, the, the simple duets of two women in eight Spanish dances, that to me was a, uh, again, his generosity of just being free to, to um, not just try and just show this diverse world that we live in. Well, we actually shared, so now that you're making me think of that trend, because you went into that whole thing, Batucada. We we both shared the seventh solo. Yes, we we shared yes. Which is kind of fun. So it was like a gender neutral. Gender you, neutral. Everybody could do it if you embraced the movement. You know. Right. That's interesting. Interesting. Well, wow. we, are, we are just about done. We have no more questions. I think because we answered probably all of them. You have been fantastic. I wonder if we can just close with what you're doing now currently and where you are also would be great. Um, you wanna start with me? Of yeah. course, I'm in my house with my children who are home, like in home with <laughs> school. I, I, I still teach, I, I teach, I teach Pilates, yes. So, um, and you know, I'm in New York City, so it's a little crazy. We, we don't know where we're coming or going, but um, yeah, so that's what I'm doing. Um, with the behind me, I'm, I'm at my, uh, our design studio. Um, so I, it was really, you know, being, having a, a creative and artistic expression has always been a passion of mine, whether it was dance or art. And um, right after I moved to Los Angeles, I bounced around, didn't quite know what I wanted to do. Did I want to be a lawyer? Like what? You know, do I want to be a filmmaker? <laughs> Um, and then I remember all the times we travel, we travel so much for Ballet Hispanico. Um, um, I still remember like the Spanish, the, the, the Spanish tour was my favorite tour, like of all time. That um, I had this connection to places, design, and so I went to design school. Um, so now I'm the vice president and interior studio leader for Corgan, an architecture firm that's based out of Dallas. but. I'm the leader in Los Angeles, so that's what I'm doing. And so I think everything in terms of choreography, how do I create that entrance? How do I choreograph and design? So what does that reception look like? You know, what does the open reception look like? I, I always remember how it feels to walk through the space. Obviously, visually, right? You need, um, um, you know, you need the big opening. Um, a big, uh, big finale closure. So I, I still think, think about it that way when I do design. Um, so I just like to think of it as it's choreography, choreographing the space, you know, designing the space. That's what I do. And so beautifully. 
I've seen this work. It's gorgeous. Yeah, <laughs> I want to see more of it. Thank you so much for, for being with us. I want to also thank the audience um, for being with us. If you have any questions, please send them anyway. Um, I also want to make sure that you remember, or just as a reminder, that next, uh, in two weeks, January 27th, we will be show doing another one party featuring the work of Alberto Alonso with Si Señor Es Mi Song and the music of Gloria Estefan. So don't miss that. That's going to be great. Thank you so much for being with us. Have a great evening. Adios, amigos. Bye. Bye, you Thank guys. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye, you guys. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you.